Hello there, you're watching and listening to another Scoutcast and www.fantasyfootballscout.co.uk and my name is Mark. And my name is John C. My name is Andy. And I'm Luke. Good evening gentlemen, no Granville tonight I'm afraid, uh, he's under the weather apparently, I think he just had a bad game week didn't he John C? I didn't look at his score but I don't think he had a great one I, and also I don't think he can listen to you gloating about punching which is going to happen a lot isn't it? <laughs> That's true, yes I will, I will mention him a couple of times, I'll try and keep it keep it low key though. <laughs> Oh, God, I tell you, Punchin's turning up more than the Dembele theory at the moment. It's <laughs> sickening. Uh, we're going to have, have plenty more of that. Uh, Andy, how do we find you? Uh, not a great game week again. Wildcard active, I hear. Wildcard is active, yeah. Uh, as predicted, well, we'll come to it in a second, but as predicted, the players I didn't think would do well didn't. And, uh, yeah, Wildcard set my uh, season on course now. OK, well, we'll go through that with a fine tooth comb. Granville, the wildcard expert, uh, isn't here, but we'll do our best to chip in with that uh, and I'm sure he'll come back and tell you how much you've wasted it uh, next week. Luke, uh, do you have wildcard active as well? Is that right? I've got my wildcard active, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, we'll have fun with that then, John T, won't we? Well, we'll go mm. through those Good. in a bit of detail. We're going to try and help you guys out uh, the best we can, uh, not that I can help anyone much at the moment, uh, by talking about Kapu, uh, who uh, I know I'm not going to play again, I'm going to get a lot of stick for that. Uh, I think John T is. He's going to be firmly in his uh, back in his case. We're going to talk about Ibrahimovic, who is officially, I can announce, out of my team. He's gone, gone, gone. Uh, I know, look at the eyebrows being raised on John T's face there. Almost went off the screen there, the eyebrows. <laughs> uh, wait until I tell him I've sold Eden Hazard as well. Eyebrows, look at that, <laughs> shock. Uh, yes, so those two are gone. Ibrahimovic's gone, we're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about Liverpool, are we, again? John T, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, very popular because they've got a good fixture, so yeah. people want to know. Good fixtures, good fixtures, fixtures plural. And and Fia Walcott is a favourite of mine. Who's sure? No, no, not Fia Walcott. Surely yes. not. Theo Walcott. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, let's do our game weeks first of all. Then we'll move into Rafa to smooth the community game weeks. Um, so I'm I'm not going to get too gloaty, but 69. My game week was a good one, uh, and I'm back in. The, I'm quite happy with that. Up to 387 in the world, and John T. We're level pegging now, very close. 23 points. Well, in it, we closed the gap, and I'm level the, now. I think. Well, you're level exactly. We have both got an overall rank of 387, 695, with exactly the same amount of transfers. So that's really? a, 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 a scout cast first. What does it come down to? Does it come down to who was born first or something like that? Um, well, I'm in the moderators, uh, the fancy Football Scout moderators table. I'm above you, but I've no idea why. It possibly is alphabetical. Is it based on, based on number of bedrooms? I think it's how many J- Jason, Pun- Jason Punchins you've got in the team. I've got one, so obviously you've got none. So I think that goes on that. No, it's not based. That's, no, that's two mentions. Two, but it's, two. Can you keep score of this? Keep score this. That's two punch mentions. Uh, yes, so we're level pegging. Uh, I had a decent game. I, I said, didn't I? And, and Granville said, oh, you always say this on paper. I said, Sanchez, Sterling, Lukaku, I'm quite happy with those three. I think they're going to do some damage. And they did. And Sanchez could have done a lot better. The, the penalty, which I'm sure um, if Granville was here, he would be moaning about because he was a, a Santi owner, of course, was a shot to us all. Not really. I'm not really clear why Sanchez took it. I don't think Wenger knows, well, we know Wenger doesn't know why Sanchez took it, but he missed it anyway. So he could have done a lot better for me, but I was very happy with his haul and very happy with Raheem, who, who again looked very lively, which he didn't do at Old Trafford, but certainly did against Bournemouth. So 69, uh, what's the tale of your game week, Jonty? Apart oh, from punching? Well, um, well, I didn't have those heavy hitters in midfield. Um, uh, so, I mean, I, th- I did a kind of okay, but a bit below average. I got... Obviously, I've got a couple of assists from Punchin. I've got a uh, goal from Costa, goal from Antonio, and uh, an assist, uh, which I know which you might mention, uh, from Ibrahimovic as well, who's my captain. So I did okay. Um, but what it was, was all of those that scored for me, they didn't do the things that Sanchez or Sterling were doing, as in getting a goal and an assist and bonus. Mm. So they were just well, getting... Sam- so Sanchez just getting, didn't get bonus, did he? Because no. I missed penalty, but he, but, he did, but he did get, um, you know, they, they were racking up the points. And, and that was the thing. I mean, with, especially with City, and I know we're going to be talking a bit about Man City and about doubling, even tripling up on them. They look so frightening going forwards. And I know a bit later we'll talk about uh, Fangio briefly, but one of the reasons I did well in that was because I just went Man City mad in that. And, and it really, which is cheating. Should be, which is should cheating. Be but it's, uh, yeah. But, but, but that's the thing. Um, We'll come to it in the scout cast. Too many players, so many of them, 
scored. I mean, I think it was something absolutely ridiculous. 17 double-digit scorers in FPL in uh, game week five. Amazing. I mean, I mean that is, that's a huge this is the season. Of this is the season we're having. It's, it's an incredible season so far. Very enjoyable. Uh, and I'm going to talk about transfers later but uh, when we get to the image but the, the, the thing i was talking about last week about is the market going to be volatile are people going to swap heavy hitters out really quick i think it is happening i think and, and it's making it very exciting let's come to you luke 60 points that's a decent game but you must be happy with that yeah it's pretty good uh harry kane captain um 18 maverick points. maverick stuff yeah yeah always tried to be a little bit maverick um it's against Sunderland, so you know had to expect some sort of points but then i was a bit worried until it uh, happened at the end also, my transfer was bringing in Deeney against my own team, Man United, and last-minute penalty. That was always good. Um, Sterling, 13. The rest of them, just mainly twos. Morgan chipped in with six. But, yeah, 60. Got to be happy with that. Up to half a million in the world. So, a decent start, a decent foundation after five game weeks. I think we're all used to being, you know, around that half million mark, maybe. It's nothing spectacular. And then, uh, as the game weeks go by, we creep on up. And there's game week eight to come, of course. Game week eight, which is promised to us every year. And, you know, we're all going to get three digits and Tadish is going to get seven goals. So it's fine. Uh, Andy, uh, you're creeping up. But again, the wild card's active for a reason, isn't it? Yeah, I'm only creeping one way and it's definitely not up. I'm down to 1.3 million now. So I didn't want to say. But... Yeah, I know. It's just, I, so I said after the show last week to you guys, I said, I'm not going to wild card this week. I've got Redmond, Barkley and Lamella. I'm really worried about them. I'm going to have to go on next week and it's going to be another awful show for me, points wise. And it was, yeah, no, no one did anything. I, I went against Kane captain and bought in Ineacho in instead because I just thought City were definitely going to score quite a few past Bournemouth. Um, and we're going to come on to hits later, but I was I was tempted by Kane in, and a City midfielder, uh, probably would have been Sterling or De Bruyne. For a hit, I decided against the hit, that backfired. Um, yeah, in the actual captain, 20 points, Eber assists, 5 points, everyone else, 2 or 1. Um, Redmond actually got me his highest score since I've had him, uh, since game week 1, which was 3. Cause he got he played three. well, though. He had chances. I know. Game, I think it's, um, dare I say it, goals imminent, John T. Uh, I think Redmond's... Yeah, I think he's going to deliver soon. I think we're going to go back to him because he is still good value. He, he, he's playing really well for them. So, I don't know. I think you're just being a bit unfortunate. But it's going to be fascinating to talk about your wild card in a moment. But let, let's go on to Rafa the Smooth, John. Let's listen to some of the community tales. Was it half and half or one way or another? Um, well, as usual, all the, 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 the Smooths like to, like to speak quite a lot about... Uh, they're great week. So I'll just kind of rattle through some of them. Uh, Godfarmer, he played Kapui uh, over Defoe. So a bit of a risk there. But um, uh, the, uh, the curse of Raheem and Apple Bonkers, that's two different people. Uh, they both played Chadley. Now, what about, yeah, what about it? Duck with Chadley. Yeah. What yeah, a call that was. That is That's absolutely flair That really is. Yeah. Really, really was. Techers for but, the... But, but Apple, Apple Bonkers was speaking on Twitter about that and, and people were saying, what a maverick. And he was going, well, it's not really because when he played for Spurs, when he actually got matches, he scored and assisted. That's what he does. Um, I think the only... You know, yeah, but he's not... Wrong. But he's playing with Craig Gardner now. Come yeah, on. I, did, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I don't think he doubted Chadley, um, but I think everyone else doubted West Brom. Um, but yeah, he nevertheless he went for Chadley. It's amazing. Uh, Mithanda, I don't know. I didn't uh, see Chadley transforming West Brom like he did. But there you go. He, did. he also lived in Belgium for like half his life, so I think that's played a part in it. There. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've got a, another poster, Mithanda. Uh, he had the triple luck of um, Sanchez, Lukaku, and Ibrahimovic goals and assists there. Um, so they're all um, hotly contested. Did they touch the? The foot, the, the head, where they intended all these Listen, things. listen, listen. We all know Sanchez got a touch on the... On, on the yeah. Where we go? He, uh, there was a doubt about whether it came off the defender mm. a little more. The Lukaku, well, who knows? Lukaku, clear touch, obvious, straight off the lace. It, it couldn't have been more definite. Straight off the air. On his, on his <laughs> no, it was, it was. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I mean, I think he did touch it. I think he did. And that's all we can say, isn't it? And, and it, the, all we're going on, really, is he claimed it. <laughs> And the thing is, in the commentary, they go, well, he wouldn't. He, he, there's no way he would have taken a goal off the so, team. So is that how they award the goals, whether someone thinks they claim, claimed it? Well, I, I do think that is a fact. <laughs> if someone wheels away going, yes, that's mine. That is, it's like anything. It's like, a, you know, you're going to go, oh, well, well, why would he be doing that as a teammate? There's no way he would, no way he would <laughs> do that. And so I think that did play a decision. It was... Um, 
I don't know. It, I do think he touched it. I really do. But it wasn't a significant touch. But if you're going on the level of the law, as in if he touched it, it's his goal, then he has to go to him. And so mm. I'm, you know, I'm not going to argue. It was a tense yeah. weight, though. Mm. Really was a tense bit of it would be taken off him, but no, it wasn't. Um, we've got uh, Dempsey, like me, fellow punching owner, another another ding for the punching mention. I want to mention our scout picks as well, because sometimes they get unfairly uh, criticised. People say, "Oh no, I've got I've got eight scout picks. I'm bad with me." No, well, they're taking follow- a Mickey when they say that. Is that is? Uh, well, they effect. are taking a Mickey because if they'd have followed the scout picks this week, they'd have got seventy nine points without a captain. And so if they'd have captain uh, either oh, Ibrahimovic or Lukaku, who were on the top of our, our poll, an even bigger score. And also, I want to give a, a smooth to the goals imminent table. It was his best, best ever. It, we had Townsend, De Bruyne, Walcott, Rondon and Arnautovic, all on the goals imminent table. That's about half the table scored. That was, that was good. So let's go with some roughs. Um, Bojack brought Firmino in. <laughs> only to see him what? not play. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that was... It broke, didn't it, with 15 minutes to go before yeah. the deadline. But it didn't... It kind of was... Suge- local press broke it with 15 minutes before kickoff, yeah. uh, or before deadline, rather. Um, yeah, that was a blow. It was a blow. Yeah. And did you hear what Klopp said about it? He said it was a small muscle that isn't normally used. Any idea mm. what muscle that is? Well, not normally used in football, or not normally used... Yeah, no. He said... <laughs> It was a groin injury Ooh. to do with a small muscle that isn't normally used. Oh, and he it. smiled. And he smiled. So I think for, for me, no, did have a bruised penis. <laughs> that. It, Had a bruise, that, sorry, it cut that, out a bit then. Was it a, a bruised something? <laughs> <laughs> I just think, just the way Klopp said it, and the thing is, oh. when the quotes came out in the press, they missed that bit out. They said, oh, it's a small muscle injury. I said, I, I didn't hear Brazil have got a bit of a rep for that sort of thing, haven't they, in the past? So maybe you never know. Well, there's yeah, another. I've got, I've, got, I've got one more cock up uh, for the rough mention. <laughs> Very good. With uh, a ZZ10. Now, this is a lesson about wild carding and then not pressing the button until after you made loads oh. of So he did. Two that. words Tom Fenley. Yeah, Tom Fenley, former FPL winner, happens to the best of us, F- FPL winner. He did the same thing, racked up about 50 points. And then forgot to press the wildcard button. Zizu 10 forgot all about the Friday kickoff. So he'd racked up oh. 20, 24 point hit and he thought, oh, it's fine. I can just tinker with this Friday night, Saturday morning. No. And then so he's watching it going, ah. And he was on the site saying, can I get FPL to rescind it? Well, no. But you can email me. Yeah. Well, I mean, what you can get is loads of people laughing, which is what happens. <laughs> Oh, so sorry about that. Oh, I don't know karma, why people that, do it. Why do people do it? Just hit the button. No, see, that's karma. That's going to come back and hurt you in about seven. No, I'm sorry. That that is. Oh, well, I can assure you, I will make mistakes this season. But when I wild cards, I press the wild card button. I don't make 20, 20 point transfer. I like people straight to watch me do it just to confirm that it is done. I like oh, it. I know. I know. Yeah, you get like adjudicators around me. Have I pressed it? Yeah. I would never yeah. do it. But uh, but no, I will make other mistakes though. So Zizou. Ten can laugh at me for those. Um, so yeah, no, I feel sorry for him. That's shocking. That's yes. a shocker. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Very good. Very good. Rough. Picks are on fire. Picks are on fire. That's that's mm. good. Yeah. Good to hear. Um, Scout cast questions. Then what have we got rolling out of the community tonight? Well, this. I mean, I've kind of bundled this up into kind of general strategy kind of thing. So it's basically Aguero's coming back. A lot of people are wild carding. Ibrahimovic is scoring, but not a lot. Same with Costa. Hazard's form has dipped. Um, He's gone as well. So, yeah, the first question is really around Ibra or not to Ibra. And then Jack the Cat does having a premium front line of Aguero, Ibrahimovic and Lukaku or Costa damage the rest of the squad. And then Fozzy B says that that trio really, Lukaku, Ibrahimovic and Aguero, is it viable? We've got two FBL managers on a wild card here. Who better to ask? Let's go to Luke first. You're a United fan. So is Andy. Is that going to affect your, your thinking? Ibra or not to Ibra? Go on. <laughs> I, think it, I think it comes down totally to whether you want to play Kapui as a fourth midfielder or not. Um, I think that's basically in a nutshell. You either go for a big hitter, Sanchez, KDB, um, and a cheaper striker, or you go Ibrahimovic and Kapui. At the moment, I can't really argue against the Kapui move because uh, just ridiculous points every single week. Um, I'm not going that route and I'm going to get rid of the Mimovic, same as you, Mark. But um, it's not to say that's the good move to do. I'll no, no to not at all. This. It's probably going to backfire massively in my face. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, going to have Swede all over my face next week, I'm sure. But 
I would say that uh, it's a popular route by the looks of it because it, it's just being sold, which I, it's hard to believe. Andy, yourself, what about you? Are you, are you sticking with him? So I've actually already sold him um, because of where it was right. What's going on? I know there's, there's been so many price rises this week that I had to make a decision on like who I was going to keep and who I wasn't. Like last night, or at least I felt like I did. I'm hoping Eber is going to probably drop anyway, so it's only point one difference at that point. Um, I, th I think it's more. I, I don't think you necessarily have to pay Kapui, but it's going to be somewhere like five point six six million. Um, to uh, me, like that, there's a Palace guy. Who's yeah, Zaha. I think that's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, th I think for me right now, it pre I've got like three teams loaded here with different options. Um, I think it really comes down to Ibra or Sanchez. Now for the next two, see, I, so I've looked at a strategy where you keep Ibra, you don't get Sanchez for the next two because Sanchez has Chelsea at home and then Burnley away, um, and I think Ibra will outscore him in the next two. But after that, Sanchez obviously fixtures continue. Ibra has Liverpool and Chelsea away. Um, but I don't necessarily, on a wild card, want to plan ahead for two transfers. So I've got rid of him. I don't know if I'm happy about it, especially with Stoke in the next two, who are looking awful. Um, but at the moment, he has gone, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, the thing is with the Sanchez, I think Sanchez versus Ibu is a good, good uh, comparison. Obviously, Sanchez is getting an extra points for every goal. He's also getting clean sheets, which probably will come at Burnley. Uh, and he's also cheaper. Um, and, but the thing is, with not going to Ibra, is you haven't got cover then of United. But... Do, the thing do is, you need United, that, well, this is it. I mean, I, I do, as United fans, Luke and Andy, how do you think it's going to go? Because Marino is suddenly under pressure. And I don't know about you, but I just... From the start of the season, I, the Marino set seems different. He does seem like he is a lot nervous. He's perhaps not the one where he seems not as... Bolshy, not as confident as he was at Chelsea for some reason. There's something about his manner where he feels like it feels like he's a little bit not intimidated, but he's certainly playing it very cautious with the media and the way he's talking, and he looks uncertain. And I wonder how much pressure he's now under because they got Northampton Town, of course, which isn't easy, and but Leicester at home—that's the last team you want to play at Old Trafford because he'll be under pressure to go on the attack, but against Leicester. That's exactly what they want. So that's a really dangerous opponent. If they don't get a victory there, if they drop more points, and City's form is obviously putting extra pressure on him, I wonder how, he, how he's going to go. I don't see United scoring two or three goals a game. I think if they go one up, they're going to try and sit on it. But yeah. That's my theory. Luke, what's your view on the way Marino's going to play it? Yes, it's so tough, isn't it? Um... For me, the big worry is just, you know, the, the Chelsea experiment. I love to call it from... Before you just worry about his relationship with the players, it already looks like there was a few little digs already. I know it was only mine, and maybe the media have blown it out of proportion. But that would be my big worry: is if he starts blaming everyone else again, and I don't know. It's just it's so tough to call. I, I can't really understand what's happened to him. Similar to you, it's um, it's scary. Put it that way: as a Man United fan, it is pretty scary. Um, what I'd really like is the fact that we've got ridiculously good players. Surely a few of them are going to do something magical for us. We're going to win a few games and hopefully that confidence gets us going. But like you, when you watch City and you watch Man United, I mean, it just, it's you know, completely different. There. That's what we want. I know it's sad to say that, but for a Man United fan, anyway, that is exactly what we want. We want to be playing free-flowing football. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. So, but the I thing is, know. against Southampton, Andy, it looked like... Pogba, pro Pogba in, he was going to make the difference. And I bought Ibrahimovic off the back of that performance because I was like, well, United look a force. And then they struggled to break down Hull. And then the City game is obviously not the stuffing out of them. They've lost two more after that. I mean, what the what game is so disappointing. I mean, how do you think it's going to go? I mean, is that the re one of the reasons why you're looking at Ibra and going, how can I afford to go about Because you just don't think he's going to go crazy. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I expect, I still think like a brace is just around the corner for him, especially if he's on penalties, that's always going to help. But we just we just don't look great. And I think someone said Mourinho has lost like 15 of his last 31 games or something like that at this point. He doesn't, one of the things at the start of the season, people were saying, oh yeah, Mourinho will drop Rooney. Any any chance that Rooney's not playing well, he'll drop him. And I said, well, will he? Because no one else seems to want to drop Rooney. You know, he seems to be bigger than the club in some respects. And I don't think... I wouldn't blame it all on Rooney necessarily, but I think he needs to be benched at this point. <laughs> and he is causing issues. Pogba is having to play in a two, which he didn't do great with, with France. He needs to like possibly play in a 4-3-3 like formation. And I don't know when or if Mourinho is going to change it. And 
Flaney has played okay for like winning balls back and stuff, but he's not the player you want on the board to start creating stuff. It I know to me that's similar to uh, Chelsea last season with Ivanovic. Everyone could see Ivanovic was an absolute train wreck, and yeah. he refused mm. to drop him. But yeah, he would drop Hazard just like that. He seems to pick players that he's going to play no matter what, and he doesn't take their form into account. It's really it's he's weird. Got, he's got one matter at uh, uh, United to pick on. So, John T, these two are getting rid of him, but I've already got rid of him. <laughs> Let's see where you stand. I, I haven't got rid of them, but I might. But I, I don't think I will. Uh, what I've done is um, I had to make a move last night because of various price rises and price drops and things. And I, I had literally just enough money to do Costa and Hazard out for Firmino and Aguero. And that was a move I had planned and I wanted to do. Um, I, was, I was thinking Ertzel to Cazorla, but I, I didn't like... The, the next fixture, fixture for Arsenal, Arsenal against Chelsea. And I really wanted Liverpool coverage again. I think Liverpool are starting to fire. And I, I, Firmino is a player I regret getting rid of. I'm glad to welcome him back. He came through unscathed midweek um, in the... Um, yes, he's, he's penis, he's fine now. It's fine. His, yeah, it's uh, Costa. Uh, Costa, on the other hand, I wanted... To, Costa's... I mean, this is crazy. A lot of people say, what's wrong with Costa? He keeps scoring. But yeah, he does keep scoring. But he needs to score two to get bonus. So when you've got a player that's 10 million and they're just getting six points and you can get six points from a defender, you can get when Jason Punchin and Kapue can score more than Costa, then, then you know you've got to address that. And the, it's a good simple case with transfers. Is the player you're getting in better than the player you're getting rid of? Aguero is better than Costa. Easy. At the moment, Firmino, I believe, so, so. to be better than Hazard. Now, Ibrahimovic has got two really good fixtures. And I think I spoke last week about it's a slight patience, but I have a kind of a rule, two to three games. Now, Ibrahimovic against Watford, that's a warning sign. They've got Leicester at home and then Stoke at home. Stoke are absolutely appalling. Do I think, it's a question of, do I think Lukaku is going to outscore him? Would I captain Lukaku? Because Lukaku is realistically the one you want to get. Well, hold on, hold on. What, you, you're not going to captain anybody else up in Aguero, so why is well, the captain coming to it? Well, because, because um, Lukaku's playing against Bournemouth this weekend, for example, and then he's playing at home to Palace, for example, when Aguero is playing away to Spurs. So I'm just saying, might not, but it's certainly a consideration. See, I mean, I think this is the reason why I've got rid of it, because I just look at Aguero and go, well, that's it, captain sorted every single well, week. And that City team, there's no way I'm taking well, it well, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think, the, I think the problem with, I, I, I just feel, I don't know, you just sometimes, it, people talk about gut feeling and all, all go with your gut and all this. My gut feeling is that it's just a little bit too soon to drop Ibrahimovic. I'm tempted to King for the next two. And I think if he doesn't really get much in the next two, and especially at home to Stoke, that's a benchmark. Okay, and then international break. So is I the, might have the ownership of that too. Not, no, not really at this stage, because ownership for me is a factor towards the end, if, if I'm getting into the top 10,000 and those around me. But at the moment, it doesn't, because, I mean, if you look at it, um, you know, the, last, the first two or three weeks, like, Canty was one of the biggest, you know, most yeah, popular. You're not going to be scared of that, though, yeah, are you? You're not, you're, no, exactly. You're not scared. Of, it, ownership doesn't really indicate success at this stage. And... But if I was to get rid of Ibrahimovic, it would be for Lukaku and it would be for hit. So I'm thinking, do I get rid of Ibrahimovic? Two home games, one against Stoke. I think you worry about ownership. I, I, I reckon you're lying there. I, no, I don't think... I don't think, I don't think, I don't think I, this is, this is, this is, you, don't, you don't worry too much about ownership. Um, and especially as you said with Aguero. I'm scared of it. I, 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 think, think, yeah. I think I got rid of Ibrahimovic. I'm petrified. Like, if he does work, he's going to murder me. I mean, there's pe the pe a lot of people who are playing at this stage they start to weed out and and the, the kind of so-called casuals kind of leave the game or don't bother making so many transfers by the end of the season so the, these ones this at this stage i'm not too bothered ask me in like february and march and ibrahimovic has got is, is, is banging in a goal every other game and he's on 66 percent ownership then yeah yes it does matter then but, but, I, but the thing is a goal every other game is not enough not for not for that money. No. But the thing is, is going to get a goal a game. He, he, can, he can get bonus, he can get assists as well. I mean, and also the other thing, as I mentioned last time, it's about fixtures and form. So I've mentioned the fixtures. The important thing is, yes, Man U at Manchester United are playing absolutely appallingly. But Ibrahimovic isn't. In fact, he's top, along with Antonio, for goal attempts over the last two game weeks. So this terrible run, he's absolutely 
doing really well. He's got a, a goal attempt yeah, in the yeah, box in 27 look, minutes. Look, it's fantastic. Look at, shot, look at shots on target. Lukaku's got more than him in less minutes. Lukaku has got more than him. And yeah, so he's been And he's outscored him in FBL terms as well. Yes, he has outscored him. Yeah, so it, in less it, minutes. So I know, look, I know Ibrahimovic is on fire, but he's not as on fire but as I think, Lukaku. So the decision, that argument, it's... But, the, but, 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 but it's not a case of... For me, it's not a case of is Lukaku better than Ibrahimovic. It's a question of, for me personally, with my team, is taking a hit with that, with a player that's actually on form with two good fixtures. Oh, you don't want to is take that, no. is, 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 Exactly, is that sensible? So for me, it's not. So if you're on a wild card, if I was wild carding now, then I would, I would, I would weigh it up and say, do I think Lukaku... But, but what this isn't going to turn into is some kind of narrative whereby Jonty's really pushing Ibrahimovic, but we love Lukaku. And that's not going to happen because I think both are great players. <laughs> I wouldn't say at home to Leicester's a great fixture, though. But Stoke are the great... Stoke. Yeah, I mean, well, I think I think Ibrahimovic can turn any fixture into a good fixture. I mean, that's the that's the problem with him. I, I do fear him, I, I, but I do think that I don't think Lukaku will outscore him over the season. But I think he'll get close enough to warrant the difference in price. That's that's what I said last week. And but the I thing think is, he might totally change it up. Might, he, might, he might completely change it up. He might have Rashford and them in the front too. Well, I was going to say Rashford is the other factor. What I'm looking at again. Well, maybe I won't regret it because in a couple of weeks, Marino's got to play Rashford. Because you mm. you might have to bench Rooney, because it, there's a big call for that, and that will surely let in Rashford. I think he's he's the one he, you know he's the one player that could save Marino if he comes under pressure because he's playing him and, Ra- and Rashford scoring goals, which he's like in the actual. You throw him in the team, he scores goals. So that's the if that happens, then if, Zatan's going to just drop through the floor because as soon as Rashford gets starts and starts scoring regularly, the, the obvious trade is there, isn't it? And so that's going to be interesting too, and I think that's that's what I'm you know that's what I'm looking out for, I think as well. Okay, next question then, John T. Well, it, it's on this issue of, of strategy, really. You know, what do we do? So, so we've got uh, Micah and Dr. Robotnik um, ask about is three five two a viable option now? So we spoke about all these midfielders, and they are really pushing it in. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough. Now, what this is referring to is can we get like a really cheap striker that we can just bench? So this probably relies on you playing Kapui every week. But my personal view is I actually think, I think that's a bit boring because they are viable third strikers out there. Now, I've got Benteke at the moment. I'm probably going to give him another week or so. Let's see how he goes. But then there is Troy Deeney. There's a guard at Watford. Great fixtures for Watford. And then there's someone that FIFA King mentions, Janssen. Now, Harry Kane is out for a number of weeks. And Janssen, is he a viable third striker at 7.8? 7.8, yeah, I mean, in seven, that eight. Tottenham team, they've got I think, yes. 31 shots. And I think the game is more exciting by going for players like that rather than a little bit... It just feels a bit boring just to go 3-5-2 myself, but that's just... Yeah. No, I think so. I mean, it means that I looked at it and I thought, well, dear man, day 4-6, I can do a lot with that money. I did consider it, and I might still do, because I've still got the foe where I'm happy to keep for a couple of weeks, but he will go... So I've got a decision on whether he goes for someone like Janssen or, or Dini, or I do downgrade and then upgrade the defence. Um, so I'm looking at it. It is viable because of Kapu, who we're going to talk about in a moment. Andy, how you're setting, setting up your wildcard team? Are you sticking with the 3-4-3? Three, three? Yeah, almost definitely. But one of the reasons I'm not playing Kapu as a fourth mid, other than obviously I'm just stupid, is that there's so many other midfielders I want. So 3-5-2, I can see why people are going to. Like, I really want Firmino, Sterling, Antonio, and possibly Sanchez or De Bruyne. So yeah, Kapui in there as well. 3-5-2 could be viable. Um, but I'm probably going to stick with 3-4-3. That's what I always play. I like having the extra striker there. Um, and I'll keep on persisting with Kapui and not playing in my team, I think. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of like the answer. And the only thing um, that would put me off that would be uh, it's fixtures, maybe. I think there's three, three the next three and the next four are away, and then City at home is the other one. So, but yeah, three, four, three for me for sure. Yeah, and also, we don't know how Dembele's going to play without Kane, because I've got a theory about that. But no. Dembele might not even be in. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, Luke, what are you doing? Three, four, three as well? Yeah, three, four, three all day. Um, mm. It's just the, the 4.5 strikers generally don't score as well or aren't as consistent, are they, as the 4.5 mids? You, you pretty much guarantee two points from them. And the strikers, I mean, Diamandier is playing at the moment. Are they going to play that forever? I can't see them playing him all the time up front with um, Hernandez. I think eventually he might drop out. It just causes you an issue later down the line. I just, yeah, three, four, three. 
Yeah, I think so. John, T, you got any views on this? I mean, I mean, you're, you're kind of a three four three man as well. I mean, we're yeah, we're yeah. Well, I just said. I mean, I I just find it boring three five two because because you've got you've got these other strikers that emerge, and I think Dini and Agalu, I think, are two strikers. That I think they're already. I think they fully emerged. <laughs> I think they're gonna and players like Janssen as well. I mean, it's just more exciting, I think, to do that. And I've always liked that kind of, that seven. I mean, that's why I've got Benteke in at the moment, because um, you can move them around a bit. You move them yeah, before. the third striker is a way of just rolling the dice, isn't it? Yeah. Not, never, it's not like there's a template there yet. I mean, but this is it's all very exciting and we're shifting our big hitters yeah. around a lot. But that third striker in particular, I think we're all going to be set on Aguero and then one of Costa, Lukaku or Ibrahimovic. And then, Ideally, we've got like seven million to spend, which can mean you can move up a bracket, down a bracket, around Janssen, Dini, Defoe, those kind of players. So you can have a bit of fun with that, I think. Whereas if you go three five two, you're yeah, you're perhaps restricted a bit more. Uh, okay, let's talk about Kapu. We've got to, haven't we? We talked about him a lot last week, but he, he just won't go away, will he? He's doing, no. that, um, he's doing that goal scoring thing every week, which is quite annoying. It's, it's amazing. Uh, but yeah, so FPL version us, our underlying stats meaningless. So we'll come to his stats in a sec. Um, for the Watford. I know your answer to that one. Uh, Hurricane Gilbert, what to do about Kapui and Seymour Bling? Is he finally, can we admit that he is the fourth midfield option? So uh, before, before I let you go, I'll just have quickly go on these stats because this, this, these stats are important. His shots inside the box is five. That's over five matches. That his shots on target is five. His goals is four. To me, that sounds... That's not sustainable. That's that's below the previous. <laughs> For example, Ramsey, people always say, oh, Ramsey or Yaya Torre, that's not sustainable. But they were putting in more than that. I mean, this is literally just everything goes in as if there's some kind of weird magnet um, on the goal. And his, yeah, is it 80% goal? of his shots are on target and 60 have been goals yeah. or something yeah. like that? Yeah, um, minute, minutes per goal attempt in the box. So it's one every 90.4 minutes. <laughs> literally his one shot goes in that's it that's and, it. and the, the thing is i looked at it though because the fixtures are outstanding for watford right so we've got to think that if he's done four goals in five shots so far he's got a chance of bettering you know or maintaining something like that i looked at it i was at one point i was really tempted to get rid of hazard and get someone like coquelin or darun or a 4-4 four four basically and then go ibra lukaku and aguero but then when you know you know the, the whole united slump happened and Hazard went down in price and I looked at it and thought mm, don't know restricting so I it looks like I'm not going to play Kapu over his good fixtures and that he could really really hurt me but I've got to think regression it's so obvious isn't it I mean and in a way it's kind of like an Admiral Akbar moment I'm hoping everyone's fallen into this trap but basically loads of people are getting Kapu in going oh he's amazing what a player and then they're going to play him as a fourth mid and he's literally going to choose now when the fixtures look like he's going to return loads of points to go, oh, actually, I'm going to... I'll sit back in the double pivot, boys. You you take the goals. He probably won't. He'll probably do all right. But I've got to hope for regression and hope that people get caught out and that I get returns off of, off of my third striker, I guess. Um, Andy, he's in your wild card, but he's not in your team. Is that right? Yeah, I think this is one of those times where, like, when you're on a wild card, I think you can at least maybe not justify but talk yourself into the fact you don't need him as a fourth mid because you can just build your team how you want around him if like, if it was a case where I wanted to get Aguero back in and I didn't have a wild card then I'd be much more comfortable I think playing him as a fourth mid just to do it without too many other transfers um, but surely there's just no way he can keep up this scoring record uh, and to be honest, for, for 4.7, he doesn't need to, right? He doesn't need to score a no. goal every game anyway. So if he does go to a goal every other game or nicks him with an assist every now and again, he's still good value. Um, but I will continue to persist without him. But he, he, I, needs I think... to go out, right, he needs to go out for dinner with George Boyd. And George Boyd yeah. needs to have a chat to him about what the role of a fifth midfielder is because he's doing it completely wrong. Well, and that's the other thing as well a logical thing or like when, when you're picking your team whatever he, I've now been blocked from his points twice from Lamella two weeks in a row so now I'm even more annoyed at him so yeah for me he won't be fourth mid for sure fifth yeah. mid for me uh, and, and John T your views I mean you you playing him are you setting your team up you know you've made your changes are you set up now to play him over your third striker yeah. not going to play him over Benteke so no um, for me at the moment now this is going to sound weird it's between him and Ertzel for the bench um, <laughs> because Herzl <laughs> isn't playing very well at the moment and he's playing Chelsea and if you go by underlying stats and fixtures 
Kapui, okay, he's underlined. So, but what I'm interested in with Kapui is is actually so he's only creating a kind of a chance every game, but he's already got an assist. But he's put in 14 crosses. And he's taking six corners. So he's getting in those positions, and I think against I think because he's scoring against these good teams because they're just underestimating Watford, and then Watford are going crazy and they're allowing space. Kapui is just driving forward, off he goes. But I think against the tougher teams like Burnley. I think it's going to be much more about corners and crosses. And, and I think, I actually think it could become a bit of a, not an assist machine, but I think we're going to see some assists from him. He's going to have some shots. They're going to rebound out. Dini will hammer it in. Just, that kind I, of thing. I, I just need to go quiet. I need to go missing. I mean, it's like, there's, people, like, there's people in, in chat right now saying, this is just like Mahrez, this is just like Kane. But I it's think... Not. Yeah, Kane, Kane had uh, Kane had stats that he could maybe uh, that he could keep up, and he was playing the better team as well. I, I, what I don't see Watford being last year's Leicester at all. So, yeah, I ho- hopefully I'm not wrong, but we'll see. <laughs> Luke, have you got him in the Sky team? No, I haven't. <laughs> I wish I had. Um, just listening to you guys there, really. It's uh, for me, he only really compares with Yaya and Ramsey because it's the it's that historically more defensive midfielder from a central place. I don't think you can match him to Mares because he's an attacking player. It's it's and Kane's a different. Um, to me, that that central defensive midfield role. Um, I know in the case of Yaya and Ramsey, they obviously carried on. They kept getting goals, um, but they're playing for Man City and Arsenal. And he plays for Watford. I just there's going to be games where Watford lose without scoring a goal. That's going to happen, without a doubt, a, a lot more than it would for Man City or uh, Arsenal. And I just think he's got to regress eventually. I do think he's a quite good option. His confidence is going to be high. He's going to be trying stuff. I think there is still more, there is points in him, but not to play as a fourth midfielder. I just think that's, you're asking for trouble there. What a story, though. He's gone down in fancy folklore in five game weeks. We're, not, I mean, we're going to be talking in three or four seasons about, oh, remember, this could be enough of Kapu. He's basically going to, just the way we've referred to Rams in Torre, he's, he's not in that bracket of player, but in fancy terms, he's become a, a legend in that respect, in that we're not going to forget the impact he's had over this start to this season. And whatever he does from this point on doesn't really matter. But it's, it's a really interesting one, the way it's going. It's just another ingredient which has made the start to this season really interesting. And, and we'll see. I mean, we'll see, we'll see how he gets on. Uh, OK, moving on, Dante, next one. Well, talking of interesting, Theo Walcott, eh? remember him? Um, so he didn't, he, mm. we all thought he was going to be good last season. He wasn't, he didn't even play. But um, so we did, we won, didn't we? Yeah, well, I didn't. I, I captained uh, that was really there. But uh, yeah, McLean as a whistle. Um, oh, shockingly, Walcott's stats are on a par with Sterling. And with his excellent fixtures, fixtures, are we mad to be ignoring him as a fancy asset? He has, after all, played five out of five so far. Well, look, let's, let's roll out the goals in the table because he was on it and he's still on it because he just put, he put that goal away. But he's still there. So there's more to come. 14 goal attempts in the last four. 12 shots inside the pot. I mean, comparing this to Kapua, you know, look, you know, Etienne needs to learn from Walcott. And seven on target here. So Walcott's really up there and he's just got his goal. I think there's, there's definitely more to come. I think for me, the reservation is, will he play? Because once Ramsey starts coming back from injury, etc., etc., I don't know. You know, at the moment it looks like Sanchez or nothing for Arsenal, but I'm te- I'm, I'm tempted if I can't afford Sanchez. I must admit. Well, he, he won't he won't play. Cause, I mean, uh, the threat to him at the moment is a, a Wobi, and while Sanchez is playing up front, Walcott will play. As soon as Sanchez is playing wide, he's got a Wobi on the right, Sanchez on the left, or vice versa, uh, depending on where Sanchez wants to play. Um, so it's Perez really. If Perez is up to speed or Giroud's fit, then Sanchez will probably move out to the wing and then Walcott's under threat. I think at the moment he's fine. He's a good option for the weekend um, because Sanchez will play up front, I believe. But I think we've been there before. Well. And then his injury record as well, isn't it? He breaks down so often. That's the other thing. And Arsenal with injuries, we've seen it with Ramsey already. European football, I've got that. That's going to stress him. I no, I can't go there. I've got Sanchez anyway, so it's fine. I'm not moving off him. But I can see how it's a temptation because seven five is a great price for someone who's got the firepower that Walcott has got. And there's no doubt he's got goals in him. But I just think it's a risk. just think it's a risk. Andy, views on him? Yeah, I actually said on the site this week, I can't believe it's taken this long for him to come up, actually. Because like, playing on the right side, he's in previous seasons been considered fantasy gold. Like, straight into your team, no questions asked. It's like, it's like you said, though, there's there's going to be possible rotation at some point, whether he stays with Iwobi or Walcott. And also, Ramsey's going to be back at some point. And 
he might get the right spot. He's played there before if he's not going to like take Kazola or Zaka's spot. So it is a risk, but um, possibly one worth taking if you're on wild card and you can, you can transfer him out in a few weeks. Um, he's already got two goals, two assists in five games. So I think he keeps yeah, It's a big differential on a wild card. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, so it's definitely it's definitely worth looking at, but if you're not on a wild card, it's, it's you know you're booking yourself a transfer in three or four weeks. I think, Luke. Yeah, echo echo that really. I mean, Arsenal players always post those sort of numbers. You can look at just about any one of their players when they're playing; they've got brilliant stats across the board all the time. But it rarely turns out into points. Um, I just think it's a bit of a lottery with Arsenal. So many good players, like you say, Sanchez has got a monopoly at the moment. I expect that will change at some point as well, and some maybe Lozzle will come back into it and start. You know, dominating for a little while. I just think Walcott's is going to be bad news eventually for you. Fair enough. Uh, John T, moving on. Next one. Well, Liverpool. Now, we're going to mention Liverpool because they've got good good fixtures coming up. So, we've got lots of questions. There. Jack the Cat asks, uh, with most fancy managers going for Mane or Firmino, uh, are we wrong to be ignoring Coutinho, who scored midweek in the, uh, the, uh, the League Cup? Um, Coutinho is after all cheaper and um, Henry Hill asks which, which heavy hits to get from Liverpool and um, Dinkum Donuts says what about the Lana lots cheaper and keeping pace with the others so I mean I, uh, well I mean that's, I've already said I've got Firmino in he's the one I like um, and um, but to be honest if someone said oh I prefer Coutinho I prefer Mane or the Lana I, I can't argue with any of them I think I think there's going to be they're going to be sharing the points, and you just got to go for one, and then just stick with it, and just hope. I think so. For me, you know, for me, he's creating the most chances. That's the thing. Fourteen uh, over the season, um, and he's getting he's getting goal attempts and he's getting shots in the box. He's got an all-round game. And that's what I yeah, like. That's it. You've hit it on the head. For me, for me, knows the one who covers all the bases. He's not, you know, he's not the best in every department. Obviously, Mane is more explosive. Coutinho, you could say is. I know more more dangerous at the moment. He's, he's the one who's most improved on last season. I think Coutinho. He's definitely jumped on a level, and he could be the top choice at the end of the season. But I think Firmino is, dare I say, it, the safe option, and I've gone with him as well because I had him at the start. Got rid for Barkley. That was a mistake. Missed his two goals, but I got him back um, because I just think eight four is a great price for him. He was eight five at the start of the season. I got him in. Coutinho's a good price as well. But his ownership's higher. Uh, that's what attracted me to Firmino. He's on 9%. So I think he's got the potential to be a decent differential for me uh, at this time. So I, And the fixtures are great. I think you've got to get a Liverpool midfielder. But I'll, I'll stick for Firmino as well. Let's ask the wildcard bunch. Uh, Luke, who, which Liverpool midfielder have you gone for, if at all? Well, I've had Mane all the way up until this point. Um, but I've switched him out for Firmino because 0.6 saving. It's much of a muchness. But he's closer to the goal. Um, I think ever since he comes to the league, he's pretty much been great. Ever since he come, I think Mane, whilst it kind of applies to him, there's been periods where he's gone frustrating and not done well. We've not really seen that from Firmino. He's pretty much been gold ever since he come here. So I think I'll, I'll just stick with Firmino for now. And Andy, are you going to echo that as well? Yeah, I, I mean Lallana. I just I, I can't discount straight away. I just don't think I know he's got good stats right now, but for me, he just doesn't come across as someone who's going to score many goals. Um, even if he is a bit cheaper, I'd rather pay the the extra. Um, yeah, Mane, it's just it's just the price difference, really. If they were the same price, I'd probably go Mane, but they're not. So for me, will be be my man. I'm always worried about Coutinho, like how many of these shots are gonna. He's actually, I saw his stats earlier. He's actually got quite a few shots inside the box. One more than Firmino. I know Firmino missed the last game, um, so a bit more than uh, than outside the box. But yeah, it's probably going to be Firmino for me. But I've actually looked. Well, I really want Sterling, but I've actually looked to have him too because I think Liverpool are going to. Are going to score similarly to to City. And I saw a certain man on a, an FPL show the other day said maybe we should consider two two Liverpool mids. Yeah, so. I, I, if you're going to have two of any midfield, it'd probably be that one. Although there's, I know John is going to talk about the City and, and tripling up on them. But I, do, I, I think I think for me now it's just you've got you maintain something in every game. But they, the, you know, I think you're going to get an assist or a goal out of him if they win convincingly. Um, whereas with Mane, he will go games where he'll get nothing and then games where he'll go and get a hat-trick, as we've seen previously. Um, so let's see. Coutinho is the X factor. Coutinho is hard to call. We don't know how far he's progressed. He definitely has made that move, but he, he could still emerge as the top one, but we'll see. Um, so for me, no, it's all round. Fine. Yeah. It's also it's a factor now, but African Cup of Nations comes up eventually. Yeah. So. No, something to consider. 
yeah, that's, that'll shake us up after Christmas. Yeah, uh, Man City. We're going to talk about them then. We're going to talk about the triple. Is this all? Well, yeah. There's someone, someone called Disable here, which is Luke, I believe. It's, uh, has asked this question: Is triple Man City attack uh, overkill? And some of these are slightly kind of tempered questions, really. They're, they they like City, but they're a bit worried about doubling up and tripling up. And David uh, Capel on Twitter, he asked us too soon to stuck up on uh, City, given their tricky fixtures. Uh, Ruth NZ asks also ponders about rotation around Champions League and KTK uh, Interesta uh, said uh, be careful of Man City's fixtures so I mean I'm guessing the best thing to do is have a look at their fixtures so what are they all worried about well Swansea away I wouldn't be worried about that that looks good to me Tottenham away not so sure about and then you've got Everton at home now Everton are a funny one at the moment not sure I think I think they'll definitely score and then Southampton that's it looks good to me Southampton at home and then game week 10 West Brom away they all sound look like really good fixtures. I mean, the, oh. thing, the thing they're raising, though, is Champions League, because they play Barcelona. Man City will be playing Barcelona a couple of times around the, some of those later fixtures. Now, is Pep Guardiola going to be focusing on West Brom away or Barcelona? Well, I think they're right to think about rotation. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they've got great... The underlying stats, I mean, the goals, the points, we've all seen them. They're absolutely phenomenal. I mean, Aguero is, is putting in a, an attempt in the box every 20 minutes. That's just from the first three, because obviously he's been suspended. And then and then you just got all these phenomenal stats. De Bruyne, 17 chances he's created. He's got 32 crosses. I mean, the eyes are popping out of my head when I look at their stats. But... Well, this is where right. he could play a key role, though, I think. I mean, if he is your fifth midfielder, you might actually get him off your bench for points for once, <laughs> for example. Well, the rotation, yeah. I, it's, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it will buy it eventually, but I think I look at it and go, well, I've got Sterling, and at the, against United, I was like worried because he came out of that game, he was subbed of half an hour to go, Sané was fit, he came on, did a white, and then I was concerned, but then all those worries evaporate when I saw him against Bournemouth because he was just sensational. De Bruyne was man of the match, but Sterling was fantastic as well. Uh, I always think... You know, De Bruyne and Sterling are now kind of key to the way City are playing, and I think Sané's a great player and he will will emerge. But I think Sterling's in there for the time being, and he's only going to rest those two when he when he really has to. Same for Aguero, and yeah, there might, there might be one or two instances, but I think like these players, Sterling, Aguero, De Bruyne, they come off the bench and still get an assist or a goal. You know, I, and City, I know the fixtures are, are a bit tougher, but. Maybe we're getting carried away, but I just think I've got a feeling they're going to win this at a canter. I know it's too soon, but the way it's looking at the moment, I don't I would, see anyone getting I near them. At the moment. It's, uh, it's riskier not to go with double or triple city the way it's. But what the information we have right now, I would say it's riskier to not have double or triple city. I don't see how you can say any different than that from what we've seen. Mm. Yeah, no, and I think, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you've got to get De Bruyne or Sterling in midfield and we've got to have Aguero, but it, it's tough to do. It's tough to do. Um, so I, I, I think, yeah, we, t- we absorb the rotation if it happens and go with it and hope that we still get some points out of people or we've got players on the bench like Capu who can come in. I've, I just think Aguero's a no-brainer for the captaincy every week. He normally is anyway, but in this team, playing the way they're playing, I'm just, I'd am just i be petrified if I didn't captain him, really, because I just think... It's, <laughs> we, I think they're going to be... I mean, we, he's, we've seen him get five goals in matches in the last couple of seasons. So you, it's, it's kind of looked like it's going to happen again in this team. Do you not think, Jonty? I mean, how many chances is De Bruyne and Sterling and Nolito going to give him? Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's just the three matches, a goal attempt every 20 minutes. You know, that is, that is a great, um, great rate of, of goals. But De Bruyne as well, I mean, he's just absolutely phenomenal. The amount of chances he's creating... Um, I think, yeah, I think you have to have Aguero. If you haven't got Aguero in your team, there's something wrong with you. If, and, and yes, he is a viable captain. But I've mentioned some of these other fixtures as well. I think there are some, some other good captaincy shouts that are slightly better than Aguero. But I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's price. I think a lot of people are thinking De Bruyne or Sanchez, really. I think, I think yeah. if you've got Aguero and another good striker, you can't really have Sanchez and De Bruyne. So people are thinking about that choice. Sterling, yeah, he's still a good price. I think you can get him in um, no problem. And I think Sterling and Aguero is probably the it's kind of the city template. Something I'd be looking at in a, in a game week or two, probably. Yeah, I think, I think with the Aguero captain thing, I think we, we've got to be prepared for two pointers like we had last year. I used to fall back on him too much and I suffered a run of two points and watching other 
players get me, you know, get do well for others. But I think this season I'm going to be much more secure with that. I think he will get goals and assists um, because City have just got more goals in them. And and then inevitably he's going to have that match where he gets the hat trick. You know, it could be against anyone. He's, he's done it to Spurs before, so it's a tough fixture. But He's done it to them before, so you, you're just not going to ever want to bet against Aguero. I think it's going to make the captaincy debate rather tedious, but that's that's part and parcel. That's, that's what Aguero does. That's basically it. So we we have to wait to see if City go off the boil. Um, wonder. We hope it does because in a way it make the title race more exciting. Because like I say, at the moment I fear that for the start of season it looked like there's going to be six or seven teams in it, but at the moment it don't look like that. Okay, defence, John T. Well, yeah, there's a bit, well, a few questions here. FPL Virgin asks, with the lack of clean sheets, is it all about attacking defenders this season? Um, and, and Shakhtar asks, with the lack of clean sheets, why, why spend a lot on defenders? Why not get 4.5 ones? So, I mean, one of our post-regular posters, Don Corleone, has uh, done a bit of research on number of clean sheets. So, you know, are there lack of clean sheets? Well, yeah, yeah, there are. So, there's been 20 so far uh, this season. At this stage, last season, there have been 33 season before 29, season before 38, that was a boring season, um, and 27 the year before that. Yeah, we're way down. So, yeah, there aren't many clean sheets. I mean, yeah, that's why I've got, I've got Baines, I've got Valencia. I know people are going a bit off Valencia, but that's why I've got two reasonably priced, mid-price defenders, because I, I do agree with that. And if you have a look at attacking defenders, well, Scott Dan's in a bit of a class of his own, really, five goal attempts, in the last two game weeks, this last two game weeks, and he's just a centre back. Um, five inside the box, right? So you can see what's happening there. Set pieces. Well, yeah. Whenever he gets a chance, he's yeah. just inside the box. So there's some other names there as well. Shawcross. Well, he, he's got a goal in him. Kolarov as well. Holobas at Watford, very popular for wildcarders at the moment. Certainly, guys. At 13 crosses in the last two game weeks. Ivanovic. Well, remember him? He's a, he's actually getting there. And Louise put in some nice attacking stats. From his game, bit of a rotation risk, but nevertheless, yeah, I, I don't know. We're talking about going cheap in the fair. I, I, I'm not up for that. I think it's talk about more fun, more interesting. I think it's more interesting to have like a Leighton Baines or so, or a Scott Dan in your side. I think. I, I, I mean, I think Scott Dan, I'm fascinated by because I, I like him. I've always liked him, but he's going again. Another player who's gone up a level this year, and I actually think could he get ten goals? Because I look at that Palace team and I watch the game on Sunday and like the highlights were one dead ball after another it was literally everything apart from the Townsend goal every chance they created was from a dead ball and they've got they've got uh, I can't remember his name delivering the, the, the free kicks <laughs> in the corners um, and Scott Dan is just a monster in it I don't understand why teams don't go okay let's, let's put, put, put our best man on Scott Dan stop him and we're killing half the threat said, they don't seem to be able to stop him though do they and I just think he could he could get seven, eight, nine, ten goals the way it's looking because Padre's not going to stop playing it to it. And with the new rules stopping you holding defenders back, and it's, it's, I wonder whether 5 5 is worth it. Forget the clean sheets, let's get the goals in. I mean, are you tempted, John T? Well, at the moment, I've got that man punching. I've also got Benteke, so I've got a, bit, a lot of coverage there. Um, as you said about the, the, the potential for penalties there, that's why I've got Benteke as well. I think when one of Punchin or Benteke goes, I'll be looking at Scott Dan. Because as you said, I mean, he's, he, Palace have got one method of scoring and Scott Dan is at the end of a lot of that. And that's what you want. You want the person at the end of, of whatever strategy a team has got. Um, so, yeah, I think it's been Benteke, one shot in two matches. Yeah, I mean, that it's worries strange, me. For, really I thought, odd. I, when yeah. I saw the scoreline, I thought, well, Ben Tekken must have got something out of that. Nothing. But, I, but I, was, I, was, I was listening to the game, so maybe I wasn't watching the game, but I did listen to all of the game. I went out for a long dog walk, and what better way to relax on the dog walk and listen to Jason Punch and get assists. And, and I was listening to it. And Ben Teke, it, the stats say that he was only getting, um, you know, and he had that one shot. But listening to the coverage, Ben Teke, shot was blocked, header was blocked. He was getting in the positions... They were just going, but he was tracking back a bit too much. And I wonder if Pardew will be saying to him, don't you bother tracking back. You get in there because there's plenty of people whipping crosses into you. Mm. Um, oh, it's strange. I don't think, I don't understand it. I thought he was going to be brimming with efforts on goal mm. by now. But we'll see. We'll see what happens at Sunderland. Should get plenty of change out of them, I'd have thought. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on then. Should we do the weekend preview, John T? 
Yeah, so we're looking at clean sheets, fancy iris, and obviously our plans as well for the week. Mm. So, I mean, I don't know. Who wants to go first? Uh, Andy, do you want to go first with a, with a clean sheet pick? Yeah, actually, last week, there was four clean sheets, and we predicted every single one. So, <laughs> well, I was going to say, you're one. keeping track of this, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we predicted every single one. Um, I actually don't think there's that many this week. And uh, talking about the fence just a minute ago, I'm actually going to get a Liverpool defender in, even though I know no one likes Liverpool defence. Mm. But Chan is back, Karius is fit again. They're doing pretty well defensively, even though they, they have been conceding. So, yeah, I, I'm going to back Liverpool against Hull. And I'm probably going to bring in a Liverpool defender on my wild card as well. Well, Klein's doing well. He's too much, though. But Klein's doing it stats wise. I'm surprised John T haven't clocked this. He's stats Created the most strong. chance. Yeah. yeah. So, Klein's the luxury item. But Lovren's probably at 4 9 the way to go. Um, but, yeah, I think Liverpool will get a clean sheet there, first one. Um, we'll see. Uh, John T, do you want to go next? I think Stoke. I think. <laughs> I know okay, Stoke. Are ter- Stoke. I know. Think Stoke are terrible, but I. I just do not trust West Brom. I'm going for something a bit different this time. So I'm. I'm going to go for Stoke. And uh, the reason is, is just because of the West Brom factor. I cannot believe they're going to do what they did last time. I think away they'd be a bit more conservative. I think Stoke have to turn it around. They they have to turn it around. If they don't, that I mean they are a woeful at the moment. But um, yeah, I'm sticking with that. Unusual. Going back to Chatley and Gavin. Okay, fair enough. Luke? Uh, i go for Spurs, I think. Oh, you Spurs. nicked it. Damn. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. I just think um, I think over the course of the season, Spurs are going to be right up there. I know they haven't done that great wise uh, defensively so far, but I just think towards the end, they'll be up there and Middlesbrough they don't have much of a threat. Um, yeah, for me, I think they're the, probably the standout option, at least away from home, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so I'll have Everton and a Bournemouth. I mean, Bournemouth... Don't have a potent goal for it. Uh, I don't think they're going to score more than one goal in many matches. You don't need to score more than one goal to ruin a clean sheet, of course. But I do think Everton so well organised. Uh, I mean, last season, I know it was a goal fest, that fixture, but I don't see it this time around. I think we're going to see a professional 2 or 3-0 win for Everton. I think they're on fire, and I think that's what we're going to get. And Mr Baines may well deliver for you, Jonty, I think. Mm, hopefully. You're a bit unlucky against Baba, to be fair, because that was a foul, wasn't it? Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, I'll go with that. So, uh, fancy on a risk, John T. You want to go first? Here? Go on. Well, I'll go for the Spurs man, Janssen. Um, I don't know. Does he count a risk? He's like Harry Kane, Mark too. But uh, I think he is. I mean, I think, I think he's he gonna, does. I yeah. think he's going to play. I mean, people are a bit unsure whether he's going to do well. I think he will. I think he's going to get a good run of games, and I think he's going to start scoring this weekend. Andy. Yeah, last two weeks I've backed against West Ham's defence and I, I picked the right team last week with the wrong player. So I'm going to go for a Southampton player this week. I think Luke is also going for that. Charlie Austin. Yeah, OK. Uh, I, I think he came on his score. I think he should probably at this point be starting. Um, hopefully he will. OK, all right. That's an you know, interesting one. Uh, so, Luke, has, has he nicked yours there then? Yeah, I was eyeing up Austin, but I also like Sun from Spurs. I think... Um, mm. His stats are really, really good at the moment as well. He, he looks like he's on fire. He's reborn. So I think uh, he's, uh, he might be a better option than Janssen. I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's a while back. Yeah, and he's got to play him, hasn't he? The way he's playing at the moment, you've got to, Indeed, you've got to play that guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Redmond. I think he'll deliver. I think that um, he's playing well and we've forgotten about him. We got rid of him game week two or three because we kind of felt he's gone off the ball. And he has. He hasn't delivered, but he's playing. he's playing well and... Paul is playing him every week up front and I think that West End defence as we know has got problems so I'm going to go for Redmond uh, who a few weeks ago wasn't a risk but certainly is now and I think he's going to come back on the radar for us well, I, think he, uh, go on, I was going to say Redmond dipped off our goals imminent table um, for the wrong reason as in he wasn't having as many shots but he has appeared on the assist imminent table so that's a, I think that indicates a slight change of game uh, for Redmond, so I think he, I think he might get you points, but not from cut scoring, but from assisting. No, we'll see. I think I think they'll have a good game. I think there's goals in that game. I think West Ham will improve. West Ham have got to score two to have a chance of winning the game at the moment. So I think two will draw, plenty of goals, plenty of points in that. Uh, okay, transfers and captains. John T, you've already done yours, then. so just just repeat again. You've got a bit of Costa and Hazard, so the Chelsea boys are gone. Chelsea boys have gone, fixtures and form, I know it sounds crazy with Costa, but it's because he's not getting bonus, um, and I've gone for Aguero and Firmino, I think that's a good upgrade, I've got nothing in the bank now, 
it all depends on whether I decide to do Ibrahimovic to Lukaku for a hit. I don't think I will. I think it just doesn't feel right. No, Ibra for a hit is too too far. I but I'll be I'll be I'll be captain Aguero, and I'm looking to play Kapoue. I'm tempted to either bench Ertzel or play all out attack chip. And one of the reasons I quite like to play Kapoue is because he plays on Monday. I haven't got really any other players on Monday. Um, I could play Heaton, but yeah, I, I think you'll play all out attack. I'm looking at it as well. I, I think you will. I, I just so what are you going to do every week then? Rotate Kapoue and Punchin? Is that well, right? Punchin's fixture starts to turn a bit. See, this is a good fixture. Sunderland is, is a good fixture for Punchin. Um, looking at the um, defence, Sunderland are pretty poor. Uh, errors leading to a goal where well, they've got two errors, just errors, defensive slips. They top, they top the table this season with four. I mean, this is all good stuff. Um, and they've also, they're also really conceding quite a lot of shots, both in and out of the box. So that's four well, kicks. I got Pickford in goal. He's going to get me loads of points. Well, I'm telling you, that, that Townsend for Palace, Pickford yeah. combination. I think Townsend will have 10 shots. And I think, I've, I think it's, a great, it's a great fixture for hopefully Benteke and Punchin and, 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 and uh, Townsend and, and Zaha and the gang. But I think afterwards against Everton, the fixtures turn a bit. So yeah, Punchin becomes my Kapui then. Interesting. Yes, well, he, he's certainly Kapui for me. Uh, Andy, um, what are you going for? Transfers and captain? Yeah, well, I'm wildcard in, so... Um... Yeah, some, some of it's kind of fixed at this point. I'm going to go Pickford and Heaton in goal. Three midfielders are definitely going to be in the team. Firmino, Antonio and Sterling. I just think for their price, they're just excellent value right now. Bringing Aguero back in and then probably going for Dini as my third striker. So Dini's, Dini's your big, your big uh, kind of roll of the dice there, isn't he? Yeah, I, I don't know if to stick with Benteke really. Like I feel I feel like I'm on wild card, so because he hasn't scored, I need to change him, which I know sounds ridiculous, but it's just like the kind of mentality you play in the wild card. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, and then and then at the back I've got Baines and Lovren, and then I've got a bunch of cheapies. So the captain will be Aguero. He's back straight in as captain. Yeah, I've got a feeling the captain chat on here is going to get very very dull very quickly. Actually, every week, uh, Luke, who's your big uh, wild card roll of dice? Have you got one at all? Have you got what's the equivalent of your Dini? It seems like all the wild cards seem pretty similar. My team sounds very much like Andy's there. Um, I, I'm going to go with De Bruyne. I think over Sanchez. So I think that's probably going to okay. be. Different to most people I think quite a lot of people will end up going Sanchez um, the thing we're going to Bruyne you can always obviously change him uh, to Sanchez assuming you've kept the money in the bank and his fixtures for Arsenal get a little, a little bit better after next week so um, I know I may captain De Bruyne instead of Aguero just to, just to go for it um, I can't see going anyone else apart from City potentially Firmino but I don't know I just don't trust Liverpool when they play like a weaker team like the Burnley thing I just think they always seem to do better against the better team so I'll, I'll yeah It'll probably be Aguero, but maybe De Bruyne. So what's your midfield then? Your, your five-man midfield, with the, you haven't got Sanchez, you haven't got Sterling, so what is it? I have got Sterling, triple up City. So oh, you're tripling City? Oh. Yeah, right. Sterling, De Bruyne, Firmino, Antonio and Capu. Yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah. we're saying there's not a template. It sounds like there is at the moment, doesn't it? It sounds like you know, Antonio's, yeah, Antonio's in every team at the moment. Uh, Capu's in every team, obviously. Uh, and then you've got one of Sanchez, De Bruyne, and one then probably Sterling in there as well. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is forming in a way. But what's exciting, as I've said, is two weeks ago we were talking about Ibru and has it been almost essential. And well, now people are getting rid, including myself, and you, obviously you got rid of Hazard as well. John T, do you think we're going to regret the Hazard situation? Do you think he's going to hurt us? No. <laughs> no, I think, I think I'm just sticking, I mean, because there's so much choice, I think you just have to stick to a particular... Thing. And my particular thing is underlying stats and fixtures. And, and, and Chelsea's fixtures are terrible, and Hazard's underlying stats last two weeks are terrible. And I think that's what you have to go with. Um, I don't think I don't think you'll punish people too much. <laughs> you never know. But um, I, I think you just have to go with whatever your game plan is and hope for the best because you can't have them all. No, this is it, and it is moving quicker than ever. And I think it, you know, it's exciting to be able to shuffle that around. I mean, I look at Sanchez and go, well, he's in there for now, but if he has a if he blanks in the next two or three, he'll be the next, won't he? You know, it, there's no, there's no kind of they, these big hitters can't be complacent and think that we're going to keep them anymore. I think I said in the digest, you know, last season we kept Ali, we kept Kane and Vardy and Mares because, in a way, we could afford to because they were cheap, and also there wasn't really any alternatives. You know, when I went through that non-Aguero phase, I was trying, trying desperately to justify it, but. but I was struggling to see where else to go. And in the end, I had to go back to Aguero because it wasn't a convincing enough alternative. Whereas 
we've just got rid of Ibra, three of us here, because there are there are alternatives. There's alternatives all over the park, and and it's um yeah, it's making for a much better season. Dare I say it? Harder, but much better. It's almost reverted back to maybe two seasons, well, the past two seasons ago, isn't it? All the big hitters are doing well. It, it seems to make sense going cheap in defence. It's like how I used to play FBO. It feels weird. It feels nice for some reason. Yeah, a little bit nostalgic because I think the last two seasons it has been almost too comfortable because yeah. we've had Kane one season and then Imarez and Vardy the next and it made it, you know, it, you could sit on those players and you had plenty of money around because of those players. Whereas now... Yes, we've got Kapu, but we know we know that's not going to be around forever. Um, so it's it's very, very different, very difficult and very different. But I'm enjoying it. I think it's my best season for a while in terms of my enjoyment that I'm getting out of it. And week to week, it seems like there's proper decisions to make, which I'm not saying it hasn't been the case before, but it seemed that way, that's for sure. So thumbs up so far. We're enjoying it. We're enjoying the Scoutcast too. Thanks for listening tonight. Uh, hopefully Granville back next week to uh, pick holes in your wild cards. Thanks, Luke, for stepping in, as always. Thanks, Andy, and thanks, John T, for the community questions and rough with the smooth. And thanks for listening, guys, out there It's uh, and girls. Uh, it's a good night from me. Uh, good night from me. Uh, good night from me. Uh, good night. Good night, all. <laughs>